No, we're not taking naps on this thing, okay? I'm sure you do. That's pretty good. That'll work. So, I, uh, I, was, on, I was on a trip a few months ago. Uh, i got to think about when I was on my trip. What month are we in? May? Had to have been like April. Or was it March? Anyway, whatever. April or March. And I don't know about you guys, but when I go to a hotel, unlike my house, because I'm not paying for the AC, <laughs> when I go to a hotel, I crank that AC. Anybody else do that or their parents do that? Like, so, so much so that, that when you get in bed, your bed is cold. Like, underneath the covers, it's freezing cold. But then you put those blankets on, and it is just comfy. Anybody feel like that? Yeah? But the problem is when you wake up in the morning, right? Because then you wake up, and you're like, I ain't getting out of that bed. I, yes, I stink. Yes, I need to go take a shower. Yes, I'm excited for what's about to happen. Yes, like va- if it's vacation, great. I was going to a conference. I'm like, yes, I'm excited. I get to go to this conference. I'm ready. I ain't getting out of bed. Because I know as soon as I pull those covers off, I'm going to be frozen. It is going to be icicle central. Like it's going to be, whew, no thank you. But it's always worth it, right? Like if you're on vacation, maybe you're going to an amusement park. Maybe you're going, I don't know, maybe you're going out to eat, you know, going to breakfast, delicious. Maybe it's like for me, I, pay, I paid to go to a conference. So I was like, you know, I want to go to this conference. Uh, it's worth it to, to release the comfort of the covers and to go about your day. But it's hard. It's, it could be nice to just stay in the comfortable bed. It could be nice to just stay in the warmth of the, of the hotel room and, and in the warmth of, of those sh- bed sheets, but you would be missing out on everything else. You follow me? If we stay in a comfortable spot, we're going to be missing out on all the rest. See, the message tonight, I titled it, um, Mistaking Comfort for God's Will. Mistaking Comfort for God's Will. Because sometimes we think our comfortableness, being comfortable, is right where God wants us. But often, it's when we're uncomfortable that God is really doing the work that he wants to do. It's when we're uncomfortable that he's taking us from point A to point B. It's that, it's that first, okay, I'm going to get out of the sheets. I'm going to be uncomfortable, and I'm going to head towards the shower because I smell. And then once I take my shower, now we can go about my day and have a great day because I actually came here not to sleep in the bed, but I came here for the conference, or I came here for vacation, or I came here for another reason. Maybe you came to sleep in the hotel bed. I, not me, you know what I mean? Like, Don't stay in the comfort. See, here's the other, the, the flip side of that coin is don't mistake discomfort for being out of God's will either. He talks about peace. We can follow his peace but peace and comfort can be two different things. I can could, I could be uncomfortable and have the peace of God, and I can be comfortable and, and, not, and know that I'm not living in, in the peace of God. So we're going to dive into Exodus chapter 4, 5 mainly, and 6, but let me set the stage for you. The book of Exodus is the second book of the Bible, and it is where a famous guy named Moses is going to lead the people of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt, into the promised land, which we know now today as the nation, the the spot, Israel, right? So in chapter 3, Moses meets God. He encounters God with a burning bush, and God tells him, hey, Moses, I know you just ran from Egypt. I know you just killed an Egyptian. I know you used to live there, and now it seems like the people don't like you, and, you know, but all the people that were hunting for you, all the people that were looking for you, they're, they're dead now, and I want you to go back to Egypt to be my leader, to take the people out of Egypt, to take all of the Israelites out of Egypt, and take them into the promised land. Moses is like, not me, Lord. Like, I don't know about that. 
Not, not me. And, and finally, after, I'll say, much convincing and much deliberation, God's like, okay, I'll help you. Uh, I'll let your brother Aaron be the spokesman, but you're going. You're doing it. And so Moses and Aaron come together, and they head to the Israelite camp. They tell them, hey, this is what's going on. God says, we're going to go out of Egypt. And God even showed them. He's like, hey, here's the sign that you're going to perform for them. I want you to take your staff and throw it. They had like walking staffs back in the day. Uh, Some of you might walk around with a walking staff. Good for you. Maybe try this, maybe don't try this. But God said, hey, take this staff, throw it on the ground. And when you throw it on the ground, it'll become a snake or a serpent. Which I'm like, I'm good, you know. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to see that. But that was a sign. And he's like, when you pick it up, it'll become a staff again. So that's what they did. So in chapter 4, verse uh, 29, it says this. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the sons of Israel... And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken to Moses, which was, we're getting you out of here, and we're going to the promised land. He then performed the signs in the sight of the people, so the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about the sons of Israel, and that he had seen their affliction, then they bowed low and worshipped. And this is where I think a lot of us hear Christianity, and we're like, I'm in. But then we stop reading. See, because the truth is here. The Lord is concerned about you. The Lord loves you. The Lord sees you in your affliction. He sees you in your pain. He sees you in your suffering. He sees you at your home when you're not getting along with your parents. He sees you uh, at your job. He sees you. He knows you. And he's concerned about you. And you're like, amen. Like, sign me up. God, God is on my side. Like, come on. And then you see a miraculous sign. like, wow, and he could do that? Like, let's go. I'm in. But what he's doing is he's getting you ready to get out of a place of comfortable into an uncomfortable place as you are pursuing his desire for you, as you're pursuing his goal for your life. The problem is a lot of us give up in that moment. And we read it right here in chapter 5, verse 1. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron came and said to Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may celebrate a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and besides, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Please let us go three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Otherwise, he will fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you draw the people away from their work? Get back to your labors. Again, Pharaoh said, look, the people of the land are now many, and you would have them cease from their labors? And he's like yelling at him. He's like, these people have grown so much, and they're doing so good for me. They're building the pyramids. They're going crazy. Y'all know the pyramids in Egypt? Like, hello, right there. He's like, you're going to make them stop working for me? That's not a good plan for me, buddy. So the same day, Pharaoh commanded the taskmasters over the people and their foremen, saying, You are no longer to give the people straw to make brick as previously. Let them go and gather the straw for themselves, but the quota, or the amount of bricks which they were making previously, you shall impose on them. You are not to reduce any of it, because they are lazy. Therefore they cry out, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. He just thought they were trying to get out of work. He said, let the labor be heavier on them and let them work at it so they will pay no attention to false words. So what happens? Moses and Aaron come up to Pharaoh. Hey, we're going we're gonna to get out of here. We're going to take all Israel. We're going to get out of here. Pharaoh's like, no way. Not happening. In fact, because you're doing that, I just think you guys are lazy. You guys got to gather your straw now too and make the same amount of bricks. Good luck with that. So then what happens? They, they can't make the same amount of bricks as they were making before because now they have to go gather straw, and so they're getting beat. Now they're getting literally beaten by the taskmasters because they can't make enough. They're not producing the same. And so the, the foreman or the, the guys in charge, the Israelites that are in charge of the other Israelites, are getting beat up, and they come to Pharaoh. They're like, why are you beating us? Like, chill. We can't make, like, it's not even... 
possible. We can't make enough bricks because we have to gather the straw first. Like, there's not enough time in the day to do this. Why are you doing this? He's like, because you're lazy and you're saying, go sacrifice to, our, to your God. And they're like, oh, Moses and Aaron, you did this to us. God gave a word. God gave a word in chapter 4 and said, this is what I'm going to do. We're going, we're going to leave this place of, of comfortableness, what you think is comfortable, what you think is good, what you think is right, and I'm going to take you to the promised land. You like my illustration here? Okay. We're going to take this mat, what you think is comfortable, what you think is what I have for you, but I have a much better place for you. But, but the problem is, the space, when you, when you take the covers off right here, the space in between is often quite cold and quite uncomfortable. And if you don't keep your eyes on the promised land, if you don't keep your eyes on what he has for you, it's so much easier to be like, well, I, I know this was all right, and I'll just cover right back up. But God doesn't want to leave you here. Listen to this in chapter 5, uh, verse 21. They said to them, this is, uh, this is the foreman, when they left Pharaoh, they talked to Pharaoh. Pharaoh's like, oh, you, did this, you put this on yourselves, Moses, Moses and Aaron. So they came back to Moses and Aaron. They said to them, these are Israelites. May the Lord look upon you and judge you, for you have made us odious or stinky in Pharaoh's sight and in the sight of his servants to put a sword in their hand to kill us. Listen, we were comfy. Why are you messing it up? Yeah, we were slaves. Yeah, yeah, they were beating us. Yeah, things, you know, but we were comfortable. We knew what this was like. Now it's getting worse. Why are you doing that? Because you think you're going to make it to the promised land. You know, like, what? So Moses, Moses now cries out to God. Verse 22, then Moses returned to the Lord and said, Lord, and I know some of you have asked this question. Lord, why have you brought harm to this people? Why did you ever send me? Ever since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done harm to this people, and you have not delivered your people at all. God, we were here already, and we could have stayed here. But you said we were going there. So as soon as we step out into the uncomfortable, it gets real uncomfortable. Why? What? Why can't it be like this. You know what I mean? Like just from, from comfy to comfy, let's go. But it's not like that. In fact, it's often like that, right? Way out of the way. Way gone. And this space is quite uncomfortable. But this space is where you grow the most. This space is where you see God the most. This space is where you encounter God the most. This space is where you learn about God the most. And this space, sadly, is where you keep going or where you quit. Right here in the uncomfortable. This space is where you say, is this thing really worth it? Am I really in, all in for God? Will I do what he says, or am I bailing out? So Moses, in this space, throws out his questions, his concerns, his complaints, like, God, you said you didn't want to leave us there. You said we were going over there, but man, it sure does not look like it. You've thought that? I thought that. It's like, okay, God. I, I know that this is where I am right now, and, and it's okay, but I know you don't want to leave me in slavery. And so I step out, and it doesn't feel any better than that. In fact, it feels a lot worse. Are you sure I'm doing what you're supposed to be doing? And that's why we can't mistake uncomfortable for not God's will. Because perhaps, maybe, just perhaps, God needed to make the Israelites uncomfortable enough so that they wouldn't want to return back. You hear me? Maybe it, was, maybe it was God's will to make them uncomfortable 
so that they would be like, man, Egypt was bad. Like, slavery was bad. Getting beat, yeah, that was bad. Being told what to do, yeah, that was bad. Freedom? Ooh, that's good. Maybe God was saying, hey, listen, I got to make you uncomfortable so you don't go back to the very thing that's killing you. I got to make you uncomfortable so that you don't go back to the very thing that, that is leaving you trapped and bound and in slavery. I got to make you uncomfortable so that you'll give up that stuff because I got way more for you. See, the Bible says that we were just like the Israelites when they were slaves in Egypt. We were slaves to sin. In Romans chapter 6, here it is. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. It says, do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? Okay, listen to this. You are slaves to the one you obey. Either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness. So, okay, I'm here. God says go that way. I can stay slave to sin because maybe it's comfortable. Not God's will. But it's what you're used to. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean it's good for you. Doesn't mean it's helping you. Or, because this leads to death. Or obedience. Which might be uncomfortable and difficult and challenging and mentally taxing and physically exhausting and spiritually hard. Because now I gotta, I gotta read the Bible. Now I gotta pray. I gotta, I gotta cling to God because what was comfortable is now not in my life anymore. And now I'm in the space of uncomfortable. And I'm like, what do I hold on to? And it's right here. And as you pursue him, he's going to continue to lead you to the promised land. But the thing about, the thing about what was keeping you bound and what, what, was, what you were stuck in that you thought was comfortable often is way less comfortable than where God wants you to go. See, what, what we tend to do, me included, is, is stay right here because we know it, because we understand it, because we've been in it for so long. Whether it's good or bad, it could be, it could be a, as much as or as little as a job you have. It could be the friends you have. It could be how you talk. It could be your willingness to say, okay, God, I will do what you want me to do. I know for, for Andrew and I, like, I grew up in Florida my whole life. Whole life. Florida, all right? That was me. Catch me in that beat? No, okay. Uh, just kidding. Calm down, calm down. All right. But that was me until... Uh, almost, I guess, six years ago now, but it's five and a half years ago, uh, when, when Andrew and I started to feel like, all right, so, some change is coming. Then we found out that we were coming here. And let me tell you, Florida's hot, and I like the heat. It's, it was a lot comfortable, a lot more comfortable to stay next to mom and dad to be in the city that I've always been in, to have a job that I already knew, I was a math teacher, to be in a place I already knew, be with people I already knew, to be in a church I already knew. But God said, Nate, Andrea, it's time to take that next step. So we came to a, to a place that I did not know, to people I did not know, to weather I did not know. 
I'd, listen, I'd seen snow like probably on one hand five times, probably. I now live in snow. Like, what is wrong with me, you know? But you know what? I told Andrew the other day, I was like, this is far greater than what ever would have been in Florida. God has grown uh, my relationship with him more than it ever would have been in Florida. Not because Florida was bad. Florida's not bad. One day, when I retire, maybe I'll be a snowbird down to Florida. You know what I mean? I said snowbird because like, I, I like the summers up here. Florida's not evil. But I think if I stayed there, how much would I have missed in God's plan and his will for my life? Man, what are we holding on to that in and of itself may not be evil, but you should say, you know what, God? That's not more important than you. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to do what you want me to do. The problem is we hate change, right? Who, who hates change? All right. You guys are like, uh, like, some of it's like fresh school year, okay, new me, new, new whatever, you know, new school, new me. But then, yeah, exactly. It's like, no, uh, now I've got to make new friends. I've got to have new teachers. I don't know any of them. What if my math teacher is not nice? Oh, that would never be. Math teachers are amazing, okay? <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. But listen, listen, listen. God has, God has more. God has more. Here we go. Three points and I'm done. You ready? Comfort does not mean God's will. Comfort does not mean God's will. You might be here, you might think you're comfortable, it doesn't mean you're in God's will. Neither does uncomfortable mean not God's will. Because as we step into the uncomfortable, you know what's God's will? Peace. Peace. When I was on my way to Massachusetts, I was scared out of my mind. I was nervous. I didn't know what you would be like. I didn't know what this church would be like. There were a lot of questions. There was some uncomfortableness. But I had the peace of God in my heart. The peace of God is what I needed. Number two, comfort can keep you stuck and restrict growth. Okay, think about a baby, right? Baby in mommy's belly, okay? We don't want to get into all the details, but baby in mommy's belly grows as, as big as he can or she can. But there comes a day when he's got to get out. And you know what? If the baby doesn't get out, it's not good for the baby or for the mama. It could actually lead to death. But if the baby comes out now, look at you. You grow. All of you once were in your mommy's belly. I'm just saying, all right, calm down. You wouldn't be as tall as you are today. You wouldn't be as smart as you are today. You wouldn't have the information you have today. You wouldn't have the experience you have today. You wouldn't be you today if you didn't get out of the comfort of mama's belly. Sounds weird, but it's true. How often as Christians do we stay in the comfort of baby Christian? Do we stay in the comfort of, you know, uh, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me, feed me. Cry, 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 cry. And we never go to school. We never dig in. We never talk to anybody about our faith. Like, come on. Comfort, staying in comfort will leave you stuck and restrict growth. The uncomfortable, I said it earlier, the uncomfortable is often where you grow in Christ the most. You know why? Because you're pursuing him the most. Because you don't feel him right now, right? Like some of you have gone through times, I've gone through times where it's like I don't feel, I don't feel God right now. But it doesn't mean he's not there. He's there. I might not feel him, but I'm going to keep going. 
I might not feel them, but I'm going to keep pursuing. I might not feel them, but I'm going to keep digging. And that's when we grow the most. Number three, we got to be like Moses. We got to obey God. Obey God, even when it's uncomfortable. So tonight, here's your question Are you comfy? And is God calling you to an uncomfortable position? Is he calling you to a different place for more in your life? Would you bow your heads with me right now? Father, I thank you that that you have more for us. Lord, I thank you that in just as we read in chapter 4, that you see us. You see us in our affliction. You see us. You're concerned about us. You, you know us. You love us. God, we know that that's true for our own lives. But Lord, sometimes we stop there and we're like, all right, great. That's good. And then when life gets tough, when, when Christianity gets hard, when, when things get difficult, we're, we just bail out. We're like, oh, I guess, I guess we're not doing the God thing anymore. No, 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 no. Lord, let us, let us pursue past the uncomfortable and reach your presence. God, let us pursue past the uncomfortable and get to the very place that you are really calling us to go. Tonight I have, I have just two different kind of altar calls here. First one is this. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, you, you don't know God. You never really talk to God. You wouldn't call yourself a Christian necessarily, at least not by practice, not by doing, not by anything. You would say, hey, I'm comfortable in my sin, and I know that's not right. In fact, I, you can feel it right now in your stomach. You feel those knots turning or whatever. That's God saying, hey, that's you. See, here's the beautiful thing. God said to you, he's saying to you tonight, Jesus loves you. Here's the deal. We, we were separated from God because of sin. We broke that relationship, but he sent his son Jesus to die for your sins so that you can know God, so that you don't have to live in slavery anymore, but you can live in freedom, that you could be obedient to him, that you can live with him. Listen, there is a real heaven. There is a real hell. The way to heaven is only through Jesus. We've got to receive him as savior of our lives. So that's you tonight. You're comfortable in your sin and you're tired of it. You're saying, I know it's restricting my growth in Christ. You're ready to get uncomfortable and ask God for forgiveness, turning you from that sin. I want to pray with you tonight. If that's you, would you just slip up your hand? I see it, yep. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So Lord, right now I pray for these that slipped up their hand. They're saying, hey, I'm uncomfortable in the sin, or I'm com- I've been comfy in sin, and I want to be uncomfortable. I want to seek God. I want to pursue you with all that I am. Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you for these few that raised their hand. God, I pray that you would uh, show them, teach them, help them, save them, Lord. Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for their sins, that they may be forgiven. I pray that they would receive you right now in Jesus' name that they would turn from their sin and trust you with all that they have. Secondly, this. I called it the comfort altar call. You desire to follow God's will for your life, and that means that if he changes situations and makes you uncomfortable, you're saying tonight, Lord, I'm in. I choose to obey you. No matter if I feel comfortable or uncomfortable, I choose to obey you. Help me obey you. That's you tonight. You're ready to obey God in every situation, in every circumstance, in every area of your life. Would you just slip up your hand? I want to pray with you. Amen. Yep, yep. Me too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So God, I pray for these many that lifted their hands tonight, saying, I'm going to obey you, God. I want to obey you. I want to... 
I don't care if it makes me uncomfortable. I don't care if it makes me look crazy. Whatever. I'm going to obey you. Lord, I pray that over your people right now. Help them, Jesus. Touch them, O oh God. Show them your way. Show them your peace. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We honor you, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Here's what I want you to do. Students, I want you to find a place. We're going to take three to four minutes right now. I want you to find a place to just spread around the room and pray. Say, God, I want to obey you. God, I'm in. I want to obey you. Young adults, I let you go. Thanks for being here. You guys are awesome. You guys ready? Let's take four minutes. We'll go to 737, okay? Four minutes. Let's go. So find a place. Anywhere around this room, you can come to the front. You can, you can go to one of the chairs. But God, I want to obey you. I'm in. Help me obey you.